We are reading the Cookie Chronicles, Ben Yokoyama, and the Cookie of Doom by Matthew Swanson and Roby Bear. We're on to chapter 17 and 18. Chapter 17. Ben showed Mona how to stand on the scooter with one foot while pushing with the other. Easy as pie, he said, assuming that it must be easier to make a pie than to bake a cake. Easy as pie, said Mona, standing on the scooter with one foot while pushing herself along the sidewalk with the other. Ben was surprised at how well she was doing. Great job, he said. This is fun, said Mona, pushing faster. Ben jogged alongside Mona as she scooted toward the end of the block. Woo, said Mona, pushing faster and faster. Wee, look at her. Slow down, said Ben, who was having trouble keeping up. How do you do that neat? How did you do that neat trick? asked Mona, tugging slightly on the handlebars. Don't try the trick. You said it was easy, said Mona. Were you lying? It's as easy. It's easy if you've practiced a lot, said Ben. It's not for beginners. You said I was doing a great job. Was I or wasn't I? asked Mona, going faster and faster. You are doing a great job, but don't try the trick. Just getting a little out of hand there. But Mona either didn't hear or didn't want to listen. Ben watched with dismay as she yanked hard on the handlebars and shot up into the air. Uh-oh. Oh, you know what's going to happen. At first, Ben was hopeful. It seemed like Mona might just land and keep on rolling down the sidewalk. But the part of her that wanted to do a tail whip collided with the part of her that didn't know how. And the result was a spectacular tumble. Mona went head over heels like a wheel that falls off a wagon and keeps rolling down the road on its own. As she tumbled, she made a sound that sound like a thousand angels crying. And then she was still and very quiet. Ben rushed over to her and peered down at the aching heap that was Mona. She was starting to catch her breath. Yeah, she had the ear knocked out of her. Look at her. Oh, poof. Look at her right there. I'm so sorry, but do you still forgive me? Mona opened her mouth like she had something to say, but before she could utter a word, her mom screeched in like a runaway ambulance, her eyes like the like the flashing red lights, her voice like the bellowing siren. Uh-oh. She does not forgive you for either one. Of course she doesn't forgive you. You've always you have injured her again. It's okay if she doesn't forgive me for this injury, said Ben. This one isn't on my list. I just need to know that she forgives me for the first one. She does not forgive you for either one, screeched Mona's mom, Diane, as she lifted Mona and carried her toward the house. Mona raised up her head a little and gave Ben a little, um, a, a sly thumbs up. He was pretty sure this meant she was accepting his apology, that he was forgiven for the bonking, and that he would cross that item off his list. But Mona's mom, Diane, wasn't done. You... Ben Yokoyama will never ride that scooter again. You will never touch another wiffle ball. You'll never think another happy thought for the rest of your days. To prove her wrong, Ben thought about noodles. Mona's mom, Diane, went back inside. Ben suspected that she'd eventually tell his parents how he tried to murder Mona for the second time. But as long as she doesn't tell them today, thought Ben, it might not be a problem at all. Chapter 18. Ben went back to Janet's and let himself in. She had made good progress on the rug, but that was, but that was there was still a long way to go. Janet worked on one side and Ben on the other. They were like a beautiful machine. What are you doing? Ben asked. Janet gave him a look like a question mark, given the rest of the sentence. We are making a latch hook rug. I know, said Ben, but what is the verb for it? Are we hooking latch? Hmm, said Janet. Or are we latching hook? Janet giggled. Maybe, she said, but I'm pretty sure we're just latch hooking. 
That sounds right to me too, said Ben. Even when they didn't know the answers, Ben and Janet both like asking interesting questions. Ben's friend Kyle didn't care about verbs. Lang wouldn't have been interested either. Ben liked them both, but that is why Janet was his best friend. Ben suddenly realized why Janet had wanted to make this rug for him on the last day of her life. Because it was fun, like baking a cake. They had That had been her big idea all along. This is fun, said Ben. It really is, said Janet with a smile. He took out his list. Make a latch hook rug with Janet. Ben was thinking um, about was just about to thank Janet for being wise in a whole new way when she made a sound like a bird smacking in to a window. Quack! Uh-oh, that's not a good sound. Oh, no, no, no! She shrieked, snatching the rug and holding it up as if it suddenly caught on fire. What did you do, Ben? Ben was too surprised to speak. He had no idea what he might have done to get Janet so upset. I latch hooked. I thought that's what we agreed to call it. Janet's face was a hailstorm. B is for blue, Ben, not brown. Bra is brown for brown. Janet held up the color key and jabbed at it with her finger. Uh-oh. And then something clicked, and Ben understood he had been so focused on the individual pieces of yarn that he'd failed to see the bigger picture. Instead of being powder blue, Ben's forget-me-nots were earthy brown, as if the petals were dead and dried up and ready to blow away. It was definitely a mistake. But if the point of making the rug together was having fun together, Ben wasn't sure why Janet was so upset. Here, I can take out the brown, all I have to do is loosen the knots. Yeah. At first, Janet looked hopeful, but the knots were too tiny and tight to undo, and she collapsed all over again. It's ruined, she wailed. No, no, no. She wasn't even yelling at Ben anymore. She was just miserable. Ben had never seen this side of Janet. She hadn't gotten this upset when Amy Lou Bonner ben, had made fun of her sweater or when she had broken her finger playing soccer, not even when her cat died. Part of what made Janet Janet was that she kept her cool. Ben wasn't sure who this new person was. And that's the end of chapter 18. We'll be on to chapter 19. If you liked book one in the Cookie Chronicles, you may want to try book two, three, four, and five.